I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will see four examples which are taken from past examination questions. We will understand how in each situation we could sketch and label the diagram and apply the concepts to find the solution. You can join our classes. New batch is starting in August from 3rd of August. It can help you to understand trigonometric concepts and prepare for SAT Math Level 2. Our approach, Engaging Minds, really help you to bridge the gap and apply the concepts learned. See how in steps will develop the strategies and apply them in solving these examination questions. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Gain confidence and get ready for the future. Let's begin with the class now with Rohan. Hi Rohan, how are you doing? I'm good sir, how are you? Very good, very good. So we had few classes on trigonometry. Uh, Rohan, I hope you understand and remember, how do we solve trigonometry uh, questions related to right angle triangle using Sokotoa? Do you remember that? Yes, sir, I was able to remember what we did with right angle triangles. Yeah, sure. So it seems to be a very simple topic, but sometimes, you know, uh, what I've seen is that students get surprised when, get, when they really get examination style questions. So I'm going to share with you four examination style questions today, and let us see how do we solve these four questions, okay? So, so we have four questions which are uh, relating to extended exam practice, because these are not easy questions, they're pretty difficult. Uh, especially when you begin with trigonometry as your first lesson, right? So the topic, as you can see, is right triangle applications. So in every question, you can actually make a right triangle and solve. Is that okay? Yes, sir. And the only thing which you need to remember is Sokotoa. You know what is sine, right? Sine is the ratio of opposite. Uh, opposite to hypotenuse. Yeah. Positive. Adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. Correct. This simple ratio can help you solve all these questions. Now, I'd like you to read the very first question and tell me, how do we solve it? So consider Earth as a sphere with 6,370 kilometers radius. Hmm. Find the radius of the 40 per, 40th uh, parallel of latitude round to the nearest tenths. Yes, how are you going to solve it? So what I first would do is that by considering the circle I and mean, the earth as a sphere, right? We already found out that the radius is 6,370. Yeah. So what I would do is that from drawing the circle, I would first label my radius as um, a 6,370. From okay. There, I can find the diameter, which is double of radius. So if I will just okay. Anyway, if the radius is you think sixty three seventy given to you, right? Correct. Okay. And then what do you do? What is what is fortieth parallel of latitude? So what you need to understand is this statement. Find the radius of the 40th parallel of latitude round to the nearest tens. So what is 40th? What does it mean? And what do you need to figure out? Yes. So here is your globe, Earth with radius of 6370. So it really means that, you know, latitudes and longitudes. Longitudes are going up to down, right? And latitudes are going east to west, or you can say west to east. So this line which I've drawn is equator, correct? So in yes, this sir. equator, we have the latitude of zero degrees. And the North Pole will have latitude of 90 degrees. Right? Now, 40 degrees means if I join from the center, then this angle is 40 degrees. That is what it means, right? And latitude, yes, latitude will really mean that 
I make uh, this, we're talking about this region here. Do you understand? We're talking about this portion. We need to find the radius of this. That's the latitude of 40, correct? Is that clear to you now? Okay, sir. So basically the latitude of um, uh, the 40th uh, parallel of latitude would be the red line, right, sir? Yeah. And so between 90 radius, degrees? The radius is this. This is the radius of this which, you know, circle I'm making here. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So that radius R is what you need to find. So the only difficulty here with the students is to visualize what they need to find. But once they do it, it is not that difficult, correct? Yes, sir. Now, can you find this out? What is the value of R? You know that the radius is 6370 and the angle made as shown here, uh, let's say from the center of the earth to any point is 40 degrees. Think like a cone being formed, right? Yes, sir. You find this radius at the bottom of the cone. So it forms the right angle triangle, as I was saying, that is the right angle triangle, right? So A is this point, which I've considered on the surface of the earth, and B is the point in the center line joining. In that case, the angle at B is 90 degrees, right? Yeah. So no. would we um, basically do 40 minus 90 to get the angle of um, A to the middle? So I'm just enlarging this diagram. So this angle was 40 degrees. So this angle will be how much? Again, 40 degrees. 40. And that is right angle triangle. We already know that this O2A is the radius, 6370, right? Yeah. And what you need to find is R, the radius. Simple as that. So if you look at this triangle, OAB, then what do we have? Which, which ratio? Will Would it be um, cos so you know, from like angle B, which? Cos of 40 degrees, angle A, right? Cos yeah. will be equal to Adjacent side, toka toa, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is OA. So AB over OA, correct? So we can say cos of 40 degrees is equal to R, which we need to figure out, over OA, which is 6370. And from here, we can cross multiply and figure out what is R. R is 6370 times cos 40. Can you tell me, use calculator, angles in degrees, find the answer, tell me, round to tens. What is 6370 into cos 40? Use calculator, tell me the answer. To the nearest tenth, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. So I will round so it. Would it be um, 4,879.7? Okay, and round it to tens, we get 4880, right? That's what you calculate? Yeah, that's what I got okay. when rounding it to the nearest 10. Great. So that is how you're going to calculate. Is it okay? Perfect. Now let's look into the second question. Can you please read the second question? Find parameter of an isosceles triangle with 10 centimeters base and an angle of 70 degrees. Note there can be two possible solutions. Situations, yes. Oh, in situations. Okay, so you have to find, so let's sketch one, right? So let me sketch one triangle here. Let's say this is an isosceles triangle uh, whose base is 10 centimeters. And the angle given to us is 70 degrees. Let us assume this is 70 degrees. So an equilateral triangle sort of? This is not equilateral. This is isosceles. Two sides are equal. Third angle has to be different, right? Will be 40, correct? Because total is 180. So 70, 70 is 140. And therefore, this is an isosceles triangle. So you have to find the parameter of this particular triangle. Perfect. Now, 
it says there can be two possible situations. Can you tell me what is the second situation? Okay. So we have second situation could be we are given 10 as the base, right? Okay, so this is 10 centimeters as the base. One of the angles is 70. That angle could be this angle, right? The one which is not equal, correct? And the other two angles will be what in that case? Other two angles will be 180 minus 70 divided by 2, right? Mm -hmm. So 110 divided by 2, which is 55 degrees, correct? 55, yes, sir. So, so that will be the second situation. So you have to provide the answer for both the cases, right? Case 1 and case 2. Is that clear to you? And that makes this question slightly tricky. Sometimes in multiple choice question, we provide answer for this particular situation, which normally students skip. You get the idea. So both yes, have yes. fulfilled the condition. You need to find the parameter of an isosceles triangle with 10 centimeter base and an angle of 70 degrees. Perfect. So in both the cases, we have an angle of 70 degrees and base of 10 centimeters. Perfect. Yes, sir. Right. Now then, let's consider case one. This is case two. So you can try case two later, but let's solve case one in today's class. How will you find the other two side lengths? Let me so just... what I would do is I would use Cosine law? How will you find? Cosine law, so, no. You have to use the right angle triangle concept. Oh, right angle triangle. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> if, what I would do is from uh, um, A. A, right? I would divide it into half, making it 20 20 in each side. And the um, 10 being, which is going to be divided to, so it would be now. B, which is equal to 5, and C, that is now going to be 5. Okay. So, so I now have to just find the um, A and M line. Yes. So what I would do is, so I already know 70 degrees and 20 degrees, which is equal to 90. So what I would do is when... You have to find A, B, okay? I would go off, I would do cosine because I would use angle B because that was given the question. Yes. So um, it would be cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. We are using these two sides, which is adjacent and hypotenuse. You are correct. Right. So we are going to use cos of B, which is 70 degrees. And that is equals to B to M over A to B, right? B to M, as you said, is five now, and we need to find what AB is. So we can now find AB as equal to five divided by cos of 70 degrees. Use calculator, tell me what is going to be the length AB, which is also equal to AC, because this is an isosceles triangle, correct? Okay, sir. Yeah, tell me, calculate. I got 14.6, we rounded to the nearest tenth, sir. 14.6, oh, let me just check. Five divided by cos of 70 degrees. 14.61, you're right. So 14.6 is AB and AC is also equal to 14.6. Since it is high source, this triangle, correct? So now we can calculate the perimeter. Perimeter as well, each side was 10 earlier, right? So it is 14.6 plus 14.6 plus 10, correct? How much do you get?
Sorry, sir. I was just um, uh, calculating the um, AB, so I was just writing it down for AC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is the same as AC, yes. 14 points. So parameter uh, would be 14 plus uh, 0.6 plus 14.6 plus 10, sir? Yes, yes. Would it be 39.2, sir? Perfect. So that is all. You're going to find the perimeter of this particular triangle, case one, right? You can also find case two, correct? And later submitted. The only difference here is that now the angle is 55, correct? Instead of this, right? And therefore, in this particular case, uh, AB for case two will be 5 divided by cos of 55, correct? Yes, sir. Which is going to be? Oh, A, B, um, 5 divided by cos B, right, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Cos 55. Oh, cos of 55, sir? Yes, yes. Because that is the angle, right? In second case, so we're looking at the second case. We need to find AB. We know the angle is 55, right? Therefore, we're dividing by cos of 55. I got 8.71, sir. Yeah, so we're only do 8.7 plus 10, and that gives you the perimeter in centimeters, correct? So I got 27.4 for 8.7 plus 8.7 plus 10. Got it. So 27.4 is the perimeter for this isosceles triangle. So what you learned here is that we could have two conditions and we should find perimeter of both the triangles, correct? Now let's take yes, this sir. question. Can you please read the question and tell me how are you going to solve this particular question? Find an expression for perimeter of a regular n gone or polygon with no sides. N sides. Oh, yeah, with n sides inscribed uh, in a circle of r in centimeters. Yes. Circle of r centimeter radius. R centimeter, which is the radius. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. So, how will you do this? Perimeter of a regular. Polygon with n sides inscribed in a circle of r centimeters. Circle radius, I should have written, but you understand it's the radius, correct? How are you going to do this? You'll so what I first would do is I would put the radius in. So, okay. so let's say radius point being point. half of the circle. So radius is r. Yeah. So let's say this is. Let us say this is one side of the polygon. Okay. We just made one side of a polygon and let's connect this with the radius R. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Now, I'm saying A to B is side of a polygon, N sided figure. Okay. So if, if A, B is one side, then perimeter will be what? Perimeter will be n times a b, right? Because there are n sides similar to a b, correct? Right? N sided figure. Perfect. Yes. So we on? multiply side a b by the number of sides in the polygon, say to get the perimeter. But now we need to find what AB is. So the real question is, 
how do we find AB in this particular case? Length of one side of the polygon. So can you tell me what could be the angle at O? So we need to figure out what is the angle AOB. That can help us, right? Yes, sir. How much is that angle? Full circle is 360 degrees, right? And there are n sides. So that should be 360 degrees divided by n, correct? So we now know the angle at O, which is 360 degrees divided by n. Do you see this is very similar to the previous question? We again have an isosceles triangle, but this time we need to find the base. A, so we have to find out AB. Yes. Right. How will you do it then? Similar approach. So if the whole circle is 360 and we need to find out how much the angle of the whole isosceles triangle is, hmm. I would say that what we can do is just if A to O is a straight line, right, sir? Then yeah, yeah. A O B angle. We can find out we can see that A to O would be 90 degrees. No, no, no. A O B A O B angle will be 360 divided by N, right? Because yeah. there were N sides. And now what we are going to do? We'll actually draw up a perpendicular. We'll bisect this, right? Right bisector. If I do the right bisector, it is going to bisect AB, right? Let's say yes, just as we did the last question with isosceles triangle, perfect? Yeah. And each angle now is how much? So how much is this angle? This is half of 360. Half of 360 over N? Yeah. Or is equals to 180 over N, correct? Now you can use the right angle Sokotoa to find AM and then twice AM will be AB, correct? So we need to find our angle M, right? I mean, it's line M, sir, point M. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you need to consider these two, right? AM and OR, which trigonometric ratio will be used with the angle of 180 divided by N. So we're talking about sine, right? Opposite over hypotenuse, correct? You have hypotenuse. So we can write now that sine of the angle, which is 180 over N, is equal to opposite side AM over radius R, correct? And from here, we know that AM is R times sine of 180 degrees over N, correct? Correct? Yes, sir. And so what is AB equals to? And that implies that AB is how much? Is twice AM, right? Yeah. Two times R sine of 180 degrees divided by N, correct? So we know one side of the polygon. Perimeter is sum of all the N sides. So perimeter will be N times so I can write 2R times N sine of 180 degrees over N. Is that clear? So that becomes our formula to find the perimeter of any polygon inscribed in a circle of radius R. Do you see that part? Wait, so sir, um, uh, for our formula, right? Where, do, where does N come into play with R? Uh, we have multiplied these one length with N so A, B times N. N. Oh, no, because like in the parameter formula, it says like 2RN of sine 180 over N. Yeah, because A, one side is A, B. So basically parameter is N times A, B, right? Yeah. Times A, B is 2R 
sine 180 degrees divided by m. So I just rearrange these three terms. It is good to write. You know, oh, okay, sir. Yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. So do you see the formula for finding perimeter of inscribed polygon? Do you see that? So yes, sir, I was able to see that. Very important formula, perimeter of inscribed polygon. Now, if I'm talking about, let's say, pentagon. So if I take specifically a pentagon, means five sides, right? Yes, sir. In that case, I can replace n with 5, which is n equals to 5, correct? You can calculate yeah. the perimeter will be, and we could say some radius is 10, for example, and then we can calculate the answer. Perfect? Yes, sir. So now you understand, we have actually derived a general formula to find the perimeter of inscribed polygons. It's a very important question. And of course, we're talking about regular polygon. All sides are equal, right? Yes, sir. Is this concept clear? Absolutely. Yes, sir. I was able to understand like how um, we made our formula Sorry. when looking at the angles and then how we split our isosceles triangle into two right angle triangles to find our formula. So now, here is the question. I'm just saying that R is equal to 10 centimeters and N is equal to, let us say, octagon, eight sides. In that case, your question is to find the parameter, right, of a regular octagon. Is it okay? So you do it at home, derive the formula once again substitute the value of n and then find the answer perfect we'll move on okay, to sir. we'll move on to the next question which is question number four can you please read question number four find the acute angle between the lines y equals to 2x minus 3 and x minus 2y plus 4 equals 0. yes how will you do this so first what i would do is i would make um, x minus 2y plus 4 equals 0, which is a standard um, linear equation into a slope y equals mx plus b equation. Okay, so good. what I would do first is I would bring so x minus 2y plus two 4 y equals, equals zero. 0. I would bring first 4 to the other side, which would just be x minus 2y equals negative 4. And then I would get x to the other side, which would be negative 2y equals to negative x minus 4. Mm -hmm. So dividing it by negative 2, I would get y equals to 1 over 2x plus 2 okay. as my second equation. So we got two lines. Line number 1 and line number two, perfect. How will you find now the angle between the two lines? So now what I will do is, because I put them into y equals mx plus b equations, mm -hmm. I would first uh, locate my b value on where it goes on the um, y axis when x is zero. So for my first equation, it would be when x is zero, y would be negative three. And my second equation would be when x is zero, so it, it would be positive two. Okay, so I can draw the two lines you mean, right? Yeah. So let's say this is this is the other line. Okay. So we want to find the angle between the two lines, acute angle between the two lines, right? So yes, that means I'm interested in finding this angle or this angle, right? Yeah. Because that is the acute angle. The other angle is the obtuse angle. You get the idea of acute angle? Yes. Sir. Perfect. Now tell me, how do you find this angle? So by looking at the, um, the two lines when they have a common point, yeah. we can use the y-axis as the base. Okay. So assuming that it is a right triangle, we can, 
we don't have any right right the fear oh wait. then what we can do is use the slope sir as like yeah, you can use the slope you're right so then would it be just for the first equation would it be 2x two is the slope right yeah two and then the other one would be half you're talking about this equation now right yeah so what does slope give you it gives you the x like the rise and run so for every um x for every run how much it would rise and which is the tan theta value so basically yeah percent slope is if i make this diagram here it is change in y over change in x yes. and if this angle here is theta then tan theta equals to change in y over change in x which is slope so n slope area so this is key to our solution you understand yes sir the so slope for the first line is 2 and therefore tan theta equals to 2 right yeah you can find the angle theta which i have shown here so what is theta equals to theta equals to theta would be tan inverse 2 tan inverse of 2 which is how much so tan inverse of 2 that would be 1.1 1 .1, sir no 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 Tan inverse of two. You calculate it. Oh, wait. I have to change it. Up. Yeah, you are inverse. Um, tan in wait. Tan inverse of two, right, sir? Okay, now I got it. It's sixty-three point uh, four, sir. Yeah, so I'm writing sixty-three point four. Sorry, my other it was on a different mode before. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, when I clicked it. Now, the other line. What is the slope for the other line? Half, right? So let's call this angle as pi. Okay. Pi. So what is tan phi equals to? The slope of half, correct? We go half. So phi. So would it be tan inverse of half? Yeah, how much is that? So tan bracket one half. 26.6. Now, can you tell me the angle required? Let's call this angle as alpha. The angle between the two lines, alpha. Acute angle. How much will that be? How will you find that? We could um, find out the angle for, so we already know that angle theta is 63.4, so right? Yeah. And can't we subtract it by 120 to get, I mean 180 to get our other angles? Yes, we could. And we also know that the exterior angle is sum of two remote interior angles. So it is equal to phi plus alpha. And that implies that alpha is theta minus phi, correct? Yeah. So theta is 63.4 minus 26.6. So what answer do you get? 63.4 minus 26.6. We'll get 36.8, sir. You'll see how do we solve this question, correct? Yes. Sir. Also say what you were saying. That is, one eighty minus theta will give you the third angle, and then from one eighty you take away phi and be a third angle. Correct. But rather than that, at this stage you should apply the exterior yes. angle theorem, right? So exterior angle we just figured out. We go to sum of remote interior angles. And that is how we found the relate uh, that acute angle, which is between the two lines. Do you see this application? Yes. Sir.
extremely important question. So these four questions, which we just began with, have been now solved, right? Do you understand how do we solve these? Yes, sir. I was able to understand how you're able to solve in the different ways. Like the first one being in a circle, how you can solve with the radius given and in and like uh, I think it was a 40 parallel latitude. So how you two are able to split the triangle into two right triangles, find one half of it to find the other half. Right. For the second question, it was about a similar is similar to the first one I said we just had two triangles made and how we could correlate between the two and I think the third question if I'm not wrong was how we can create and how we can get a formula out of a triangle which is embedded in a circle of n sides of a polygon and then like understanding how two linear equations can also create a triangle as well when having a common point. Perfect. So with all these concepts clear, I think it's time to wind up this class. I hope you have understood all the solutions. And with that, I think you can actually solve uh, the most difficult questions based on right angle. Right?